Today I'm watching the Patreon sponsored 1984 film The Terminator. I've heard of this movie, it's been on the watch list for a very long time, so I'm excited to finally get a chance to watch it. I know Arnold Schwarzenegger is in it, but that's all I really know about it. I'm not too sure what to guess off the title or anything like that. I know Arnold typically does action movies, so I'm kind of anticipating something along those lines. Thank you so much for sponsoring this Patreon video. If you want to have a chance to sponsor a video, be sure to join Patreon. The link is below. If you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch, please comment below as well. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content. I've definitely seen that production company before. James Cameron? What? Okay, awesome. That's terrifying that that's not that far away. 2029. Oh my gosh. Oh, we're going for more sci-fi? Okay. Pew pew. Wally? Wally, is that you? What was the robot from Chopping Mall called again? Oh my gosh. So many lasers! The machines want to exterminate mankind? Okay. The final battle is tonight! It's reminding me of um, the Stranger Thing intro, which I'm sure obviously was inspired by this, but uh, yeah, just having each letter slowly cross. Love a good 80s soundtrack. And even like the style of font is very like computer, you know, typeface. Stan Winston, what? Okay. I'm excited now. Boop, boop, boop. Written by James Cameron. Okay, I was wondering if it was based on a book or anything like that. Hey, that's the name of the movie. Oh, okay, we've gone back in time. Okay, to the present, or to them, what would have been present day, 1984. Clothing optional, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Oh my. He just like appeared out of this lightning? Nice night for a walk, eh? Is he supposed to be an alien or something? This is not gonna end well. Oh my, see you later. Oh! Oh god! He put his whole arm through him? Cheese and crackers. Yep, yep, that's what happened. Oh my gosh. Yeah, he like kept repeating their lines, so I'm wondering if he is an alien or something, but then he was, you know, able to uh, communicate very clearly. Another one? May, Thursday. What year? <laughs> oh, they're from the future? They've been like sent back in time to stop this robot war, I'm guessing. They have the ability to send people back in time, but don't have the ability to send them with clothes. Well, you know, not a perfect world. Who's it gonna call? Ghostbusters? Uh... Sarah Connor, okay. Guard it for me, Big Benz. Pig Jeff's? Is this an actual restaurant? Comment below and let me know. Like, he wasn't tough looking enough. Oh, and he hates windows, apparently. He has to have a jacket with studs on it. Oh, my. But takes a station wagon. Oh, God. Oh, God. She's in crackers. He's not very graceful, this guy. This isn't real leather, is it? 
Oh, come on, kid. He's just putting a scoop of ice cream in her pocket. That's going to get sticky real fast. Look at this way. In a hundred years, who's going to care? Ha ah, well, she's not wrong, seeing as what we've seen of the future so far. In the 40 watt range. Hey, just what you see, pal. The Uzi 9 millimeter. Oh my god. What is this guy preparing for? Handguns, but the rifles you can take right now. You can't do that. Wrong. Oh god! See you later, bud. It's literally making a sawed off shotgun. Cheese and crackers, these two are, uh, they mean business. Just having to drive around for all these payphones. Is he also looking for Sarah Connor? Oh, shoot. And what happens when they find her? Oh, that's, I don't think that's the right one. Oh, God. Well, definitely isn't anymore. Sort of. What happens if the other guy finds her? Breaking news, Teamster representative. If she only knew, all the foreshadowing in this movie is creeping me out, man. <laughs> See, like, I hate machines. They're taking over the future. Oh, they're just driving over skulls. That looks like a pretty crazy, it's like a transformer robot machine thing. That's insane. How would you destroy that? That's crazy. Just like the scale of the robot or this machine that's taken over and the two of them and just like this wasteland of metal and everything. And the color palette's been very like muted grays and blues and stuff so far. Oh, he's gonna blow it up. Okay, that'll work. Like, there's no escape. Where do you go? Oh, man. Oh, Walkmans. Sorry. Oh, she's got a Flintstones t-shirt on. So cute. First, I'm gonna rip the buttons off your blouse one by one. Oh, my. Spicy phone call. After your bare cleaning breath. Oh, my. Hello? Summer of the buttons off your <laughs> It just starts all over. He's like, I've got my whole speech prepared. I'm not going to waste it. Uh, bye. Pugsley is her iguana? Uh, something's come up and it looks like I won't be able to make it tonight. Uh, oh, shoot. Her date's canceling. But don't be shy. It's okay. The teens need love too. So talk to him and didn't <laughs> that. She's got her Walkman on. Oh, my. Yeah, I didn't hear the messages, obviously. Machines need love, too. Oh, dear. Two hours ago, 35-year-old Sarah Ann Connor was pronounced dead at the scene in her Santa Monica apartment. That would be so creepy. Could you imagine hearing your own name on the news of being a murder victim twice in the same day? Yeah, I'm curious. I, I hope we'll find out later why they're going after her and like what her connection is to all of this. If she's like somehow responsible or, or they think she's responsible since they feel like they have to take her out. From what we've seen of her character so far, I don't see the connection, but like I said, we're still, it's pretty early. I love how the majority of this plot so far is consist around pay phones and phone books. Um, okay, nightmare fuel. Don't make me bust you up, man. Oh, bonked him. Oh my god, through the glass. Oh god, again. He's like, I hate mirrors. Just a sandwich, some milk. She's got the ants on a log. Oh god. Cheese and crackers. Oh god, no. Didn't even ask if she's Sarah Connor this time. Oh god, no. I'm at this place on Pico Boulevard called Tech Noir. I'm really scared. Ah, frick. Now he knows exactly where you are. And we've got these, like, tracking shots of them walking with a steady cam. Or, oh, God, he definitely broke that guy's hand. He's not paying the 450. Just let it. Just, it's fine. Let him in. 
Yeah, I'm assuming steady cam or another version of steady cam, but we've seen that a few times when people are walking towards camera. I love how just like the pure luck circumstances she's managed to avoid him so far. Like that bottle fell, her last name or her middle name being like putting her last in the phone book. Ah, oh, frick. Now there's two of them in there. She's surrounded. This laser gun. Pew pew. Oh. Well, that plan backfired. Oh my God. I was wondering if they, I assumed they knew each other because they seem to be both from the same time or got to 1984 in the same way, so... They can't be killed? I don't even the name of the bar has technology in it, like tech and machines and everything. So cool. They've gone for very different attack methods. This guy's got a shotgun. Come with me if you want to live. <laughs> oh my. Well, I don't think she's got much choice. Come on! I thought they were both trying to kill her. He's a robot? It's reminding me of like Robocop. Oh God! Not a big talker, this guy. Okay, see you later. He's like, excellent, there's a gun here for me. I need more guns. Hold on. We haven't heard their like character names yet either. Like other than Sarah's, but I don't know what this guy's character is. This is 1L19, westbound and Olympic approaching Overland. That's not his voice. What? He can not imitate other people's voices? This isn't true. How could that man just get up after you did not a man. Machine. Oh, there we go. One zero one. Okay, his character's name is the Terminator? Okay. Like a robot? Not a robot. Cyborg. Oh. Flesh, skin, hair, blood grown for the cyborgs. Look, Reese. So bizarre. Will not stop. Ever. Until you are dead. Like in Robot, it's got its, or Robocop, it's got its prime directive. With these weapons, I don't know. I wasn't expecting the Terminator to be the villain. I wasn't, ex or I wasn't expecting Arnold to be the villain. Terminator's a very ominous name, so uh, it makes sense that he's up there trying to kill people. But yeah, I thought um, Arnie would be our protagonist. Yeah, and that's crazy the level of detail they've made in like advanced robotics. And uh, like they said, 2029, that's not far away. Were orderly disposal. Spurned it by laser scan. Oh god, he's got a little barcode on his arm? That's crazy. His name is Connor. John Connor. Your son, sir. Oh One son. Is she pregnant now? What? Okay, that's crazy. That's why she has to live to give birth to this son. It doesn't look like he has any eye- or his eyebrows are like... raised? Yeah, they don't even know if they can kill him. They're like, oh, with these machines, you know, like we don't know because he can't feel pain. He doesn't have any feelings. Oh, bye! Yeah, so how are they gonna take him out? I have no idea. Is Reese crazy? Well, that's what we're gonna find out. Yeah, how do you explain that, hey, this guy has come from the future to save me because my future child is somehow involved in a resistance against a robot machine war destroying the human race? Seems like an everyday situation. Yep, 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 yep. Oh god, his eye! Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, they've gone to like such detail to make them look so human, and now obviously they blend in and you know hide in a crowd. They're not sticking out like a big shiny robot or anything like that.
Oh god. Oh my god. I like not even flinching obviously, like this doesn't affect him at all. Does he know how to repair his cyborg parts? I think it'd be insane if he just has like a giant switch on the back of his neck or something. Oh my god. That's crazy. So cool though. Each finger is just a different mechanical. Yeah. So, like your tendon, so like your muscle would be. Ah. Blew the whole place. Well, how are you supposed to get back? I can't. Oh. Nobody goes home. Nobody else comes through. Well, no pressure. And me. And the fate of the world. He can't go back? Oh man, so he has to re- well, I guess depending on what he does, relive the same future or hopefully change the fate of the world. Oh god. Oh god, not I stuff. Oh! He's just scooping out his pupil. Jeez, a cracker. He didn't even clean that thing off before he got in there. Oh my god, he just pulled out his own eyeball. Swoop, right in the sink. It's like, well, I only need one, technically. Is he gonna wear an eye patch for the rest of the movie? Oh my god. Gah! Kind of looks like Michael Myers there. Whoa! That's so cool. Like the Michael Myers mask. Well, sunglasses. Sunglasses would also be a more logical option than a pirate patch. Hey. <laughs> that was crazy. His, his eyes are a camera. That's nuts. We did see those like POV shots where it was like all red and had like a uh, target in the middle and information on the side. What about when he punched through the windshield? He was probably on PCP. <laughs> That's his first response. I'll be back. Yes. Oh my gosh. Was he just like assessing like the frame to see if he could like punch through the glass? Or he's like, let me go get my shotgun real quick and then I'll be back. I've heard that I'll be back line, but I didn't know what it was from. Oh god, he's got his whole car! Okay! Bye! Ooh! That was not subtle or graceful, but I feel like that's how he rolls, you know? Goes for the most extreme, intense entrance. If you're not safe at the police station, where are you gonna go? Oh, right in the bits. Oh, no. Ed. Ed's dead. It's like a locked door is not going to stop me. I'm the Terminator. Oh, it's Reese. Okay, good. Is that a gremlin? Yeah, he's just take off at a gremlin. We gotta get you to a doctor. That's okay, forget it. What do you mean forget it? Are you crazy? Is he a cyborg too? He's got a strength. I die for John Connor. Do we get to meet John Connor? <sighs> At least now I know what to name him. <laughs> Don't suppose you know who the father is. I was gonna say, did they explain uh, how she gets pregnant? I know he dies before the Wait. war. I don't want to know. Yeah, some things would be hard to uh, pretend you don't know. It's not looking good. Oh, the picture of Sarah. Did John give him one? Why does he have that picture? Those glowing red eyes? Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, gosh. Possible response. Oh my god. You asshole. <laughs> Amazing. They, um, was this like a video game at some point? Just like the scrolling options of different responses reminded me of a video game. Mom's Cabin, Big Bear. 
Oh, shoot, he's got our address book because people still had address books in 1984. And even, yeah, just the way the flies are attacking him and he doesn't, yeah, he's not concerned. Those Nike shoes, man, they've got their moment in the sun for sure. Oh, like the pup that was helping them find the Terminator. Oh, no, did they get her mom? We know we can impersonate voices. Is he pretending to be his mom or her mom? Oh, frick. I love you too, sweetheart. <laughs> There's no way you can't laugh at that scene. Come on. Arnold in his shades and his leather jacket saying, I love you too, sweetheart. Oh, man. I'm not. Is Reese John's dad? It doesn't seem like there's a lot of time for romance in the future. I came across time for you, Sarah. I love you. Oh? Okay. It's like I've been staring at your picture for a very long time and now I'm in love with you. Oh, it's gonna get spicy. She gonna take Reese, Reese's virginity? Oh my. Yep, here we go. Such aggressive smooches. It's definitely a shoot first, ask questions later kind of guy. That was cool, okay. See you later. So close. Oh god, no! Oh my gosh! Oh my- <laughs> Oh god! He's got that Terminator in the headlights look. Cheese and crackers. Oh god. Oh my god. Just being like bounced around all. You stay here. He's not gonna feel it, but man, that would have. Oh! Let's get out of here. Oh my. <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can see the metal underneath him now and his eyeball and his cheek and everything. Terrifying. It looks so cool though, like just really well done. If he wasn't terrifying enough, now he's got a giant truck. Very explosive truck also, this oil tanker. Oh, get out of there! Oh! Yeah, that looks amazing. And the fact that he like has nothing to fear. Oh God, that's gonna make a very big, yep, best hide in there. Yeah, it just looks so crazy to see all like the inner pieces of what he looks like inside instead of like muscle. So cool. Pfft. He's been terminated. <laughs> a literal trash fire also. Comment below if you know how they did that because it's worrying me that it was mostly real. Cheese and rice. Oh my god, is this guy Michael Myers? Like, frick, he's still alive. Emerging from the flames. How do you freaking kill him? I'm melting. He's definitely determined, that's for sure. Yeah, like, the, they say they had flesh on the outside, so that would burn off, but, like, how do you kill the cyborg part? We got it. Oh, my God! What? 
Shut the front door! That's what he looks like without all his skin. Oh my god! That's crazy! That looks amazing. Yeah, and like it's literally like a metal skeleton. Ah, I'm so impressed! That's so cool! And yeah, it even has like backbones and like, oh my god. Just the level of detail is horrifying, but also so cool at the same time. What are you doing? Cover! I didn't think we'd get to see him in his like full robot form, but that's so cool. Kyle! Come on! Come on! Come on! No, never! Move it, Reese! On your feet, soldier! <laughs> No man left behind! I'm gonna have to look up how they made this. Comment below. Yeah, it looks so cool. And they haven't made it like stiff, like he's walking and like moving his head like you like a person would. Like it's not just like those glowing red eyes. Terrifying. Oh, yes, there we go. Bonked him. He's like, hold this for me. Oh! That'll do it. Yeah. Literally blew him to pieces. Amazing. He can't go back to life now, right? Like... Is he something about gonna rebuild himself? Are we gonna do that last shot where we see like a finger move or something? Oh. Oh no! Oh, come on, you can't do this to me. Oh, for frick's sakes! Come on! Ah! It's just his torso. Wow! And just all the different cables and everything that are keeping him together. Ah! This freaking guy! Or cyborg is a cyborg, I guess I should say. And just the sound of him slowly like dragging himself across the floor. Hit the button! You gotta crush him! Yes! I love a good one line. Whoa! See you later. Killed by a machine. Oh my god, yes. It's his face. Watching the life go out of his robotic red eyes. <laughs> oh my god, with the fog and everything. So cool. And I love the one-liner before, it's so good. Now is he actually dead? Oh, uh, Reese. Oh, my heart. Kyle. Kyle. Kyle Reese. I feel like he's going to be John's dad. Because obviously we saw the spicy scene. And then he said that all he knew about his dad was that he died before the war, which would also be accurate. Right. And that's what she was wearing that we saw in the photo that Reese had. Will it affect your decision to send him here, knowing that he is your father? Yeah, how would that work? What did he just say? He said there's a storm coming in. Very ominous indeed. So John knowingly sent his own dad back to the past so that he would be born? Crazy. 
as she literally drives off into a storm. Dun, 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 dun. So that was my first time watching the Patreon sponsored 1984 film, The Terminator. I really enjoyed it. I wasn't expecting the sci-fi element, but that was fun. This like cyborg killer going after humanity and trying to eliminate the human population and very specifically going after Sarah Connor. I haven't seen a ton of Arnold Schwarzenegger movies, so it was good to go back and kind of see some of his earlier work and I think a role that he's most known for. He didn't say much. He was definitely a shoot first, ask questions later kind of guy. He did have some funny one lines when he's pretending to be Sarah's mom in that voice and even when he's like scrolling through the different options of what to respond to this guy at the hotel and tells him to F off. I thought that was funny and I don't know if they didn't give him a lot of lines just because they wanted to make his character seem more robotic and just he wouldn't be there for conversation. He's obviously there to try and take out Sarah and wants to get done as quickly as possible. Or if there was another reason, comment below and let me know. I'm sure his script, other than like what the action sequences were, his actual dialogue was maybe like three pages, four pages. He didn't say a lot. I don't know if there are sequels or anything like that. Comment below and let me know. Or remakes. I know this came out uh, quite a while ago and it definitely looks like they killed Terminator at the end. They had killed him with a machine, which of course the ironic is him being a machine himself. We did see like a little epilogue of Sarah driving off and, you know, recording these tapes for what we can safely assume will be her son to be John Connor in the future. I don't know if that's how they were trying to set it up for a sequel or if they just wanted to see how this one did and then go from there. But yeah, comment below if there are sequels or if you think I should watch them. Limited cast, we basically had our three main characters and then other random uh, extras throughout but I thought everybody's performance was great. I didn't recognize the girl playing Sarah Connor or the guy playing uh, Kyle Reese, so comment below would I know them from other things, but I thought they did a great job, and Arnold, I think, is more action, and that's type of, he's not usually like a dialogue-heavy character, so I think this worked well for him. He just had to show up, be intimidating, and then leave, and then do the same thing over again, basically. I feel like if leather jackets and motorcycles weren't already high-selling ticket items in 1984, they definitely would have been after this movie. I feel like there was probably a lot of people dressing up for him as Halloween when this came out or doing cosplay even now. So it was definitely a very like intimidating tough guy character. I like how they started off with you know the flash forward to 2029 and then we go back to 1984 and kind of see how things have begun and where they've gone wrong and how they're trying to prevent that. So they weren't able to stop the war but now at least John Connor will be alive to help them fight the war. So that was interesting. I thought maybe they would try and prevent this war altogether and go after this um, computer that's starting the war, but they took this approach. I love 80s movies. I love sci-fi, so this was perfect for me. I loved all the throwbacks to, you know, them using phone books and pay phones and he's having to drive around to a pay phone and that's how even he finds Sarah Connor's name is in the phone book. I'd be curious to find out if it had taken place in modern times, what they would have done. And even the year 2029 isn't that far off. So it's interesting to see sci-fi movies that were made, you know, know 30 years ago that are now becoming the year that the future is supposed to be and it's kind of weird it's like someone predicting something and then you're getting close to that date you're like is that actually gonna happen I was wondering if they were ever going to explain who John's dad turned out to be as it didn't seem like Sarah was dating anybody she didn't mention anything and we saw her date blew her off at the start of the movie as well so I was wondering if that would ever be explained but we definitely found out and it's interesting to think that John sent his dad back from the future to go make sure that he's actually born. It kind of felt like back to the future and of just that like time traveling element of going back to save yourself basically because if his dad doesn't go back then he's never born. I love that they had time travel in there. I wasn't expecting them to be time traveling naked obviously. They said that anything that's you know not nothing dead can go back and I guess clothing would count as like dead matter or whatever. It wouldn't work when they tried to send them back so that's why I couldn't take any weapons or anything back with them which further played into this you know it battle against this incredibly powerful cyborg that's indestructible and I like that they gave the Terminator these abilities. He was a cyborg but also could like scan things and it definitely reminded me of Robocop at some points how he's got his prime directive to take out Sarah Connor and that POV from his like camera eyes was really cool and how he can imitate people's voices. Again just like something that they didn't need to add in there but just made him even more terrifying and just having all those skills just 
elevated his terrifyingness and also gave some moments for comedic relief which is nice especially when you contrast to just how tough and terrifying this character is and then he comes out you know that scene where he's got Sarah Connor's mom's voice I was very excited to see James Cameron and Stan Winston's name in the title both incredibly talented I love that they showed us the full robot that was so cool and how we slowly see him deteriorate you know at the beginning of the movie he's obviously human and just when they're describing it the level of detail they go in to make him human like he has bad breath and he sweats so he's even more impossible to detect and that's why Reese says you know I was only able to figure out who he was because he was starting to attack you he blends in he doesn't stand out he's not that big shiny robot that we saw at the end of the movie and I love how they showed the progression of you know his face slowly deteriorated and we see him pick out his own eye which was terrifying but it wasn't an eye it was just like the human piece that they had created to put over his camera lens eye so he would fit in and then when he's in the oil tanker and his face is just like slowly comes apart and you can see all the mechanics under his skin and everything so cool just so amazing and just really impressive I don't know how long it must have taken them to do that or what the process was comment below and let me know it wasn't like a quick shot we had of him in his full cyborg form you know it's a decent amount of time we see him you know battling Reese and Sarah in this factory and you know, he's walking towards them and you just see his whole body kind of move if I have to have to have to pick one little thing it did look a tiny bit choppy but that could have been on purpose because he is a cyborg and maybe his movements are a little bit you know stiff um, because he's made of metal but the fact that he was literally a human skeleton the fact they literally took a human skeleton and then turned it into to a robot and just made it metal basically so creepy it wasn't like you know just like that circular bump of a robot that we see or just like a static shape with some arms attached to it like it was very detailed and even his skull you could see like the little indents and everything and all the different pieces it felt so detailed very realistic and just terrifying just this big reveal and just I'm sure hundreds of thousands of hours of work went into creating this and getting the movements and when he's walking Walking and you see his head moving and his eyes moving like it feels realistic and it feels like a human and that's just the fact that they took the time to put that much effort into it I don't know what the budget for this was despite there being you know a small cast and I think the entire movie takes place over like 48 hours maybe a little bit more I feel like what budget they did have they made sure to put into creating the cyborg and creating all the explosions and the action sequences like I thought they did a good job with that um, but yeah comment below what the budget was or how well this did at the box office when we first see Reese and the Terminator come to 1984 and that like lightning electrical storm I thought they were both here to kill Sarah but luckily for Sarah that was not the case one of them was trying to save Sarah one of them was trying to kill Sarah so that instantly gave us our story and I love that they took the time to set up the backstory and explain things and I thought they did a good job of pacing like action sequences with a break and then you know dialogue and then other action sequence and then a break in dialogue it wasn't just like crazy non-stop action from beginning to end and, and then the movie Movie ends and you're like okay but what was that about like what were they trying to do they did a good job with weaving the story in and I really appreciate that and obviously that adds a lot more depth to the story and the characters because you know why they're there and what they're doing especially with sci-fi sometimes it can just be very vague but they took the time to explain and really show us that what was happening and why they were fighting back and how they were doing it and how it was like this is our only chance basically like if the Terminator wins and John Connor isn't born then you know the fate of humanity is basically doomed like it definitely looked like a very grim situation when they had the flash into the future scrounging for food like it didn't look like it was a safe condition at all whatever population had survived which I imagine would already be small and now these cyborg machine terminator computer things are coming after them these patrol HKs that are coming after them it definitely felt like it wouldn't have been long before the human population was down to zero and the machines would have won and then human existence would have been erased completely from the planet I thought it was interesting that scene at the police station when he's trying to explain to them he's like yes I'm from the future 
yes, these guys are attacking us. No, I can't prove it to you. And everybody's like, okay, like this guy. And, and they've got that guy who keeps yawning and the police are telling Sarah, you know, like, it's okay, you lie down. Like, we've got 30 police officers in here. Just when the Terminator comes in and assesses the scene at the police station and kind of like quickly scans over the front area and, you know, just says that famous line of I'll be back and walks out. And I was thinking, okay, he's going to get a gun or he's going to, he loves his gun. So he'll be back with one of those for sure. And then drives the whole car through the police station. I was just like, oh my God. I definitely heard that line. I didn't know what it was from. So it was nice to finally put that together and that uh, come with me if you want to live line. So uh, it was nice to hear those finally. The color palette was pretty Pretty muted other than the explosions and we had Sarah's like pink tie-dye shirt um, for the entire movie or the majority of the movie and I love that they used a steadicam or a version of steadicam for those tracking shots when the characters are walking I feel like it just adds a whole new element to the movie and really takes the audience into that scene as opposed to just having a camera on a tripod and you know that's it so I love that they did that and especially for a movie that's supposed to be you know about the future and sci-fi and technology and even when she goes to that club tech noir I loved the story of man versus machine and how you have to like save humanity and just like this huge pressure to make sure that this mission goes well and I don't even want to know what the body count from the Terminator was I feel like it must have been massive because he has no feelings he feels no pain and doesn't care who gets in the way he's going to take them out basically and had plenty of guns and was had no problem using them overall I really enjoyed it thank you so much for sponsoring this video great soundtrack I love like the synthetic 80s music and then they also had some like it sounded like drum beat just adding like this repetitive rhythm over and over just to build the tension and that opening title like I said it kind of reminded me of Stranger Things which I'm sure is, was influenced by this just by having the text scroll across I love how they explain the backstory and how the machines are responsible for starting the war and how they basically the machines became too smart and I feel like that definitely would have played into given the time this movie came out and technology booming and growing really fast and maybe people becoming skeptical of the role technology playing in their lives and even now and the idea of this like indestructible creature who feels no pain and doesn't matter what you do and they set him on fire they blow him up several times and he still comes back to life and just how do you kill this machine I'm very curious if there are sequels where they would pick up it sounded like Sarah was heading to Mexico or something like that so yeah I'm very curious to see where that storyline would go what cast members would return but thank you so much for sharing in this first time watching with me and thank you so much for sponsoring this video if you have any other suggestions for movies you think I should watch please comment below and as always please like comment and subscribe to this channel and check back often for more awesome content he just like appeared out of this lightning. He put his whole arm through him. He's like, I hate machines. They're taking over the future. Oh, they're just driving over skulls. Pugsley is her iguana. Didn't even ask if she's Sarah Connor this time. He can't imitate other people's voices. He's just scooping out his pupil. I think I've been staring at your picture for a very long time and now I'm in love. Yeah, and like it's literally like a metal skeleton.